my dearest Annabelle. It is the second day of this battle and there is no end in sight. The people keep coming and the puppets keep killing them. I know I will have to endure this for the many weeks to come. It is only the light of your heart that provides me the fortitude to continue. Tonight, I march into the second movie. I have plenty of pemmican and heart attack, but I fear it will not be enough. I can only hope to endure. Pray for me, Annabelle. Pray for us all. Hello and welcome to Rotted Review of the Day. And today is day two of 13 of the Puppet Master franchise, which means today I review the 1990 movie Puppet Master 2. Now, having watched this one, I got to say, it feels like the sophomore syndrome is in full effect here. I really didn't like it as much as the first, even though it had points to it that I liked better than the first. Overall, taking the entire thing, it felt like it fell flat. Um, so I'm going to go into why, I'm going to go into how, and the way we're going to do that is to go into the categories. Each one is worth up to 25 points for a total possible score of 100 points. Now the plot of this one was the general idea that at the very beginning the puppets bring their puppet master that died back in the 40s back to life, uh, Toulon, and Toulon is not in the greatest of shape. He is basically a walking around rotted corpse, uh, but he wants to uh, take on a more <laughs> human palatable form. Uh, and the house becomes uh, infested with FBI agents that are there to investigate paranormal and so on and activity. And he uses that opportunity to put on bandages and goggles and full Claude reins it up and uh, and use the puppets to in a nefarious scheme. And uh, I think there was one major element of this movie that really, really, really blew. It really drug it down. And that was the monologuing. So many scenes of Toulon up in his attic with the puppets and he's going on and on about his grand plan and we're going to be happy again. It just kept happening. It just kept dragging on and it was just painful. Uh, you know, set your puppets loose, have them kill people already. <laughs> Let's have some fun with this. Uh, you know, we get what the plot is. You don't need to continue the uh, exposition. Uh, <sighs> That was pretty much the, the biggest thing that drug it down for me. And, I mean, everything else about it was kind of meh. Uh, not a whole lot about this movie really worked for me except the puppets and the kills. And when you're dealing with a Puppet Master movie, what else do you want? Well, as it turns out, you kind of want something halfway decent in between. Uh, I gave the plot 8 out of 25 points. And the reason it got as high as 8 was because of the puppets and the kills. The intent obviously was to capitalize on uh, a, a popular movie. Uh, I'm sure Full Moon Entertainment put the first Puppet Master movie out and it garnered a unexpected level of support. And, you know, now it's, well, we got to strike while this financial iron is hot. And apparently they just never stopped doing that. Uh, but it was, I mean, the, the intention of having puppets run around, causing mayhem, causing death, uh, ultimately I thought was a big success. Uh, they brought in a new puppet of Torch, which was awesome. Uh, they had more kills than the first one. It was bloodier than the first one, which is in my review of the first one, exactly what I asked for. So I really can't complain there. Uh, as far as having the diabolical villain and the overall uh, arcing plot line and storyline and trying to you know deliver that with a punch, it really fell down on that one. So overall, balancing everything out, I gave the intention 14 out of 25 points. The acting was eye-rollingly laughable bad. 
all around. <laughs> Every single person in this, uh, I'm pretty sure was paid about $30 and a gift card to Burger King. That was about the performance that they were delivering. It was shockingly bad. <laughs> um, there were characters in this that I really liked. That doesn't mean that the acting was good. Uh, I love that they actually put a harbinger in this movie. I, you know, I have, <laughs> uh, I, I love when a harbinger comes up and they're uh, stereotypical. You know, y'all don't go into that house. It's real with Satan. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I love those moments. I really do. And this movie did have it. So I mean, kudos to that. That doesn't mean it's good uh, acting. It just means I like the character. Uh, the acting I gave five out of twenty-five points. Technically, there were people standing in front of the camera, and they did read lines. Participation ribbon. The technical, it felt like, to me, the camera work, it didn't get worse. It just got lazier. The whole thing with the first-person uh, camera mode in the first one that I actually kind of thought was en endearing and charming, it didn't have quite as much of that this time. It felt a little bit lazier, and it just... Uh, Overall felt like uh, this one was being made not to tell a story, but to push uh, as much money coming in as uh, our, our, you know, keep the budget low, keep the income high. You know, we, we have this lightning in a bottle as it turns out, and we're going to continue trying to bottle it. That's what it felt like. And every bit of the technical portion of it felt along those lines. Um except for the puppets themselves, which were still really phenomenal. The Torch character was great. Every uh, puppet in this was great, and that's uh, in a combination of, I'm sure, actual puppetry, stop-motion effects. Uh, you know, However they did that, they did that well. So overall, I gave the technical a 12 out of 25 points. So that gives us a total score of 39 out of 100 points. And that's pretty much kind of just how I feel about this movie. It was okay. It wasn't, it certainly wasn't good. It wasn't great. And it wasn't nearly as good as the first one. I'm hoping that it is just the sophomore effect and that it does um, continue on from there. Well, I kind of, I hope for two things. One, obviously that the it, it gets better. Uh, and two, more specifically, I really hope that if Toulon comes back as a character, that he is a, a lot less of a jerk. <laughs> I really liked that in the first one, at the beginning, he was this sweet, old, charming man who just loved his puppets, you know, and uh, just wanted to exist peacefully with them, you know, and you know, run away from the Nazis. And this felt like a very strong uh counter to that it felt uh it it didn't feel like the Toulon that I saw in the first one and it threw me I didn't like it I didn't like the way he was portrayed I didn't like the way that presented himself the way he spoke anything about the character in the second one I didn't like and that for me was probably the most disappointing part because I did even though he was on screen for only you know a few minutes I really did like him in the first one and I want to like him again so if he does come back I really hope that I get that opportunity so that should about cover it for this review of Puppet Master 2. I welcome you to watch the rotted deep dive that will accompany this video. And I'm going to go into that sophomore effect and why some sequels work and some don't. <clears throat> specifically the second movie in a long franchise. Uh, and one key element that I believe makes them work better. So I'll be discussing that. Other than that, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for Puppet Master 3. And next time you want to watch a horror movie, first make sure that it's good and rotted.